What's going on guys, Chris here. And if you know me, or if you don't know me, or you're trying to get to know me, what's up? I'm here at the Starbucks Reserve Roast in Tokyo, Japan, located in the hip of Nakamuguro City, which is actually more famous for all those cherry blossom photos you may or may not see if, you've, if you're a Japan or Tokyo advocate. It's just like the destination for cherry blossoms. Now, the first Reserve Roast was built in 2014 in a city called Capitol Hill in Seattle, Washington. Shortly after, one of the largest Reserve Roasts was actually built in Chicago, Illinois. So if you're ever in the States and you want a little flavor of this thing, highly recommend checking out those places. This one in particular was built in February 28th, 2019, and it is the largest Starbucks in Tokyo. Over 32,000 square feet and can fit over 300 people very easily. It was designed in collaboration with a famous architect here in Tokyo named Kengo Kuma. And it was one of the first roasteries to have one of these like light wood themed tones with materials that were sourced here locally from sustainable forests in Japan. The cool thing about this reserve roastery is you'll find out here in just a second. And it was built with one thing in mind, connection. Now this place has become a must go to destination if you're local or a foreigner. And I figured why not come here and put it to the test. So what I want to do for you is take you on every floor on a little tour of this place and show you around and what you can do in here. So let's go take a look. Right, cool. Now that we've placed our order, I guess while we wait for some coffee, I can give you some really interesting facts about this place. When you walk in, you'll be greeted by staff, merchandise, and something that looks like a scene out of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory if Willy Wonka made coffee instead of candy. On the left-hand side, you'll see where you can place your order and like a handful of treats and desserts and little pastries and stuff. If you're not too sure on what to get, trust me, the staff will definitely help you. And most of them kind of speak a little bit of English, so don't be afraid if you're a foreigner coming in and you don't speak any Japanese. But they give you a wide variety of coffee to choose from. Trust me, the, the options are endless. Not only can you choose from one or two or three of them, but you can do the coffee flight and it's got five different types of coffee, so if you're a true coffee lover, you can get your coffee fix. After you place your order, you'll be given a little bit of time to kind of walk around and enjoy the scenery. One of the first things I notice is the big cask in the middle. Now this thing is over 55 feet tall. It is like the largest cast here in Tokyo. It expands on all four floors so you can see it at any time. But the really cool part about this thing, it's actually made with a very special technique. In Japanese, it's called Tsubame Tsuiki. And it's actually where they hand hammer all of the cast to kind of give it that really cool rustic look. Now, the interesting part about this is everybody who was involved in the construction of this place got to beat it a little bit with the hammer. So everybody that built it actually got to take place in the cast making process. Also, if you look up, another thing that originated here in Japan is origami. And the ceiling is actually littered with all types of designs and shapes and kind of like corners that are supposed to resemble that of origami. So if you're a huge origami lover, you're gonna love this place. Also behind me is like their Italian bar area. Now they've got three wood fire ovens pretty much going on simultaneously at all times. Here you can pick, pick up some fresh pizza, croissants, desserts. It's kind of like a secondary place from the front, but it's also got fresh baked bread. Trust me, this stuff is amazing. So if you're here, I definitely recommend picking up some coffee, but also picking up something at the Italian bar. You won't be disappointed. I think our order's up, so let's go and grab it. Next, let's sit some of that coffee. I think this one was a the, the chocolate. You got the chocolate espresso. You get to choose what kind of espresso you want in here. And some of them are like a Colombian roast or um, Brazil. This one is chocolate. It smells good. Mm. Oh yeah. Really strong coffee flavor. You can see the cinnamon. Like you smell it more than you taste it, in my opinion. You smell it more than you taste it. And then my girlfriend decided to get a 
strawberry croissant, even though she does not like strawberries. Mm. It's like powdered strawberries. It's got strawberry filling on the inside of it. Great croissant, by the way. It's like super flaky, super airy. Like everything you want in a croissant. And it's got strawberry filling in it. Well, I'm making a mess over here. Check it out. Let's try this. Hmm. It's like um, caramel almonds. It's like the topping with those little crackers or the cookies we get all the time. Sweet, crunchy, that really almond flavor in it. Let's try the pizza. You can smell the oregano from it. You can tell how poofy it is. It's made with um, like bread dough, not traditional style pizza dough. Mm. Tomato flavored grape. It's like just the right amount of sauce and cheese. And those little crunchy bits. Now that we've migrated over here and we finished all of our food and I've wiped all this strawberry powdered lipstick off my lips, I think we're gonna head upstairs to the second floor and let me show you what this is all about. Not only is this the largest Starbucks in Tokyo, Japan, but this is also the largest Tivana in Tokyo, Japan. I mean, I guess one of them owns the other. Why wouldn't they put the biggest in the biggest, right? But this one is a little special because in here, you can actually get some locally sourced matcha tea from three different farms that are located right here in Tokyo, Japan. Now, I asked what the barista's recommendation was, and that was the first thing. Now, I'm not a big fan of matcha. I kind of regret it. I mean, we can always come back and get it, but I kind of skipped out because I wanted to get a couple of drinks that were kind of like more of my taste. But something really cool about this is that you can really see what's called the dancing cherry blossoms. So if you're ever in Tokyo and you just so happen to miss the cherry blossom season, don't worry, the Starbucks has got you covered. Up here, it's no stranger to having like custom merchandise. You can actually only get some pieces of merch that are exclusive here to Tivana in Tokyo, Japan. So if you're on the search for some really cool, modern, artsy, fartsy mugs, or if you're trying to get some really cool fountain pens and ink that are exclusively to Tivana here in Tokyo, Japan, this is the place to go. Speak of the devil, look at that. Our order is up, so before we continue, let's go grab some tea. <laughs> I mean, you guys probably already saw this, but I wanted to try the spiced apple cider, the good old Ringo over here, and they had a citrus lavender tea that was recommended by the barista. So I wanted to try in both of these and get an idea of what we're dealing with here. First up, let me do my little Wow, it's so spiced, it almost tastes like alcoholic. That's like, I can't really describe it. It's not too sweet. Like the apple is really strong and the spice is really strong. It tastes like it's got like alcohol in it, the spices. I'm telling you, watch. you'll try some and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now this is the citrus lavender. Wow, that is really good. I taste the lavender, I taste the citrus. It's not like overbearing. It tastes like passion fruit, almost like a passion fruit citrus, lavender kind of taste or whatever. I don't know if it's like the Texan in me or something like that, but I, man, this needs lemon juice. It needs that little bit of extra like citrus zing. But if you're a hardcore tea fan, I know you're gonna love this stuff. But now that we're done with all of our tea and my bladder is getting fuller by the second, I think we're gonna head up to the next floor because we have two more to kind of walk around and explore. Let's go check it out.
Okay, now that we've placed our order, we're here in the third floor, which is actually known as Araviamo Bar. Now, this is probably, I think, what this place is actually most well known for, is having a floor that serves alcohol and liquor. You can get a couple of things here, like some espresso or cafe themed drinks, but I don't typically like coffee with my alcohol, but if you do, Get ready to get wired and get drunk. In this floor, just like all the other ones, you can get pastries and desserts, but there is some cool things that stand out, like the whiskey barrel wall. Now, some of them have whiskey in it, but some of them actually have coffee beans in them that they use for some of these coffee liqueurs here. Sorry to interrupt, but I think it's time to go pick up our order. Let's go. Now, I have two things in front of me, and I'm kind of cheated a little bit. We've already been here before, so I had to come back and get these things again because they were that good. This is a limoncello that they serve here. It's hella bougie, it's got a flower in it, but it is amazing. It's almost like spiced lemonade. That's the best way I could put it. It's got that little bit of cinnamon in it. It's really tart, but not overbearingly tart. In this, you can't even taste the alcohol. So if you're not a big alcohol or crazy drinker or anything like that, this is kind of scary because it will sneak up on you. The next thing is actually this thing. What it is is like all the fruits in here are sourced right here in Nekamuguro. Inside you've got apples, oranges, limes, lemons, and a little bit of rosemary. This one is a little bit more on the expensive side. I think it was 4,400 yen, which is about like 40 bucks or something like that. You get a couple of glasses to go along with it, and it typically serves about four drinks. So you get about four drinks in one. Highly recommend this thing. It looks like glitter is in here. It's, it's crazy, I wish I could explain it. That's so good. You can taste the apple, you can taste strawberry, you taste a little bit of lemon, a little bit of lime, and a little bit of the rosemary. Both of these drinks are like super light, super refreshing. I feel like I could drink this stuff all day and not get drunk, but I know if I do drink it all day, I will get drunk. <laughs> Cheers. Now that we're all done getting our drink on, Let's head on up to the next floor because it's actually the most interesting part of this place. Let's go check it out. This roastery has something really special and it introduced something called the Amu Inspirational Lounge. Now, Amu in Japanese means knit together. This was supposed to be a dedicated space for discussions and meaningful conversations. So you could come up here with either friends or coworkers and talk about things that involve culture or music and art all over a cup of coffee. We're on the outside here, right next to the lounge, and it's not only for this floor, but it's also on the third floor as well. But I figured I'd come up here and show y'all guys the view before we end the video. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what was your favorite floor in this place and if you'd come in here. My personal recommendation, I would say that this is a must go to place if you're here in Japan. It's about 20 minutes away from Shibuya. Whether you're trying to get a crazy cup of coffee, an awesome cup of tea, or a very interesting or seasonal cocktail. Whatever your flavor is, I highly recommend it. I give this thing my stamp of approval. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. In. Subame Tsuki. Tsubame Tsuki. Tsuiki. In Japanese, it's called Tsubami Tsuki. Tsubame Tsuiki. In Japanese, it's called Tsuabe.